Uh, I'm Johanna Burton, the Maurice Marciano Director here at MOCA. It's my great pleasure and privilege to welcome you to this afternoon's panel discussion, Henry Taylor and Friends, featuring the one and only Henry Taylor, joined by, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> joined by the one and only Derek Adams and the one and only Mary Weatherford. Today's panel will be moderated by MOCA senior curator Bennett Simpson. This conversation is presented in conjunction with our exhibition upstairs, Henry Taylor B-Side, which opened this past fall and runs through April 30th. We invite you to visit the show if you haven't already had a chance to, as well as to see our survey of artist Simone Forti and our collection exhibition, Long Story Short, both of which are also on view. It's wonderful to have such a full program here at MOCA, Grand Avenue, with such divergent presentations that speak for themselves and also to one another in powerful ways. As the entire art world seems to be in our city this week, we're thrilled to be able to have so many of Taylor's works with our diverse and international audiences. Henry Taylor B-Side is a big show. If you've been in the galleries, you, you can see this. It features over 150 of Henry's paintings, drawings, sculpture, and installations gathered from a career that has spanned 30 plus years. It spills over with figures, stories, histories, and approaches to, and commentary on, art making. Henry, pay attention. <laughs> I'm commenting on what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, commentary on art making. Its size hopes to match the abundance of the artist's spirit, the breadth of his vision, and the multifaceted art world, and multifaceted world, he has always moved within. Its title, B-Side, taken from the extra tracks that grace the flip side of old vinyl 45s, seeks to convey a practice that has always included more. We've invited two artists to join Henry and senior curator Bennett Simpson in conversation, artists Taylor has long admired and who have long admired him. It's a term that is used too often, but Taylor really is an artist's artist, someone who finds himself at the center of art communities across generations, sensibilities, and cities. Without further ado, I'll now introduce our amazing guests, starting with, of course, Henry Taylor himself, after embarrassing him. I'm sorry, Henry. <laughs> this retrospective of Taylor's work, which we're so truly honored to present, we love you, Henry, it's been such a pleasure, presents over three decades of your artistic output in the most comprehensive exhibition of this storied career. Born and raised in LA, Taylor attended CalArts in the 1990s and has become a defining artist in this city's emergence and is one of the preeminent art capitals in the world. Foregrounding representation in both aesthetic and political terms, but also a mixing and synthesis of art historical and social reference, Taylor's work is held in numerous public collections, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art, MoMA, the Whitney, Pinot and Louis Vuitton collections in Paris, the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh, as well as the Hammer Museum, and we're delighted here at MOCA in LA. We're happy that following MOCA's presentation, Henry Taylor, B-Side, will open at the Whitney Museum this coming fall. Derek Adams is a New York-based artist whose work spans painting, collage, sculpture, performance, video, and sound installations. His multidisciplinary practice probes the influence of popular culture on the formation of self-image and the relationship between individuals and iconography as they coexist and embody one another. Adams is also deeply immersed in questions of how black experiences intersect with art history, American culture, and consumerism. Adams received his BFA from Pratt Institute and his MFA from Columbia University. His work has been the subject of solo exhibitions at the Momentary, Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Hudson River Museum in Yonkers, and the Museum of Arts and Design in New York, among other museums. His art is held in the collections of the Met, the Studio Museum in Harlem, the Whitney Museum, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts Richmond, and the Birmingham Museum of Art. He has recently established an artist program and residency in his hometown of Baltimore called The Last Resort. 
Los Angeles artist Mary Weatherford is widely acclaimed for paintings that comprise grounds of spontaneously sponged paint on heavy linen canvases, often surmounted by one or more carefully shaped and placed colored neon tubes. Weatherford received a BA from Princeton and an MFA from Bard. In 2020, her exhibition Neon Paintings opened at the Aspen Art Museum in Colorado, while her first survey exhibition, Canyon, Daisy, Eden, a collection of works from the past 30 years, opened at the Tang Museum at Skidmore College in Saratoga Springs. That exhibition later traveled to site Santa Fe, New Mexico. Examples of Weatherford's work are held by MoMA, the Hirshhorn, the Hammer, among numerous other institutions. An exhibition of works inspired by Titian's The Flaying of Marseilles was presented at the Museo de Palazzo Grimani in Venice during the 2022 Venice Biennial. I was really excited to get to see that in person. It was gorgeous. Finally, today's panel is moderated by our own Bennett Simpson, senior curator here at MOCA and the organizer of Henry Taylor B-Side. Bennett is a longtime curator at the museum whose many exhibitions include Dan Graham Beyond, the wide-ranging group exhibition Blues for Smoke, William Pope L. Trinket, Zoe Leonard Survey, and Jennifer Packer, Every Shet I Ain't Sleep, among many others. So with that and with great excitement, um, thank you all for being here this afternoon. I hope you will enjoy what is certain to be a lively and wide-ranging discussion of Henry's work and the show upstairs. And now with that, I will hand it over to all of you. So thank you all for being here. Uh, it's great to see you all here. This, this event was, was booked out three times over. Um, and uh, it's just a testament to um, the love that uh, this city and, and the art community has for, for Henry Taylor's work. Um, uh, it is really a, an honor to welcome you here and to welcome you into the museum to look at this exhibition, Henry Taylor B-Side. Um, I, I bet most of you have seen the exhibition already, so I'm not gonna like give any preamble or introduction to it, um, uh, except to say what an absolute pleasure it has been to work with this work, to work with this artist, and to see folks like you in the museum, admiring the work, experiencing the work, feeling the work. Um, the galleries have been uh, wonderfully crowded. Um, the, the response to the show has been just um, uh, powerful. And um, I just, you know, really, at this, at this early moment in this event, I just want to say thank you, Henry Taylor. Um, for all of this. Um, in, the, in the background, we're just running slides from uh, artworks that are in the show and installation views. They're just going to cycle through. We may refer to things as they come up, but really it's also just for you all to have some, something to, to see um, besides four people sitting in chairs. Um, uh, I'm a curator and have kind of curatorial uh, things that I think about, um, and, and I'm joined here on stage by three artists who think about things that artists think about. Um, sometimes the distinction between curators and artists is not like that, but um, I think today, uh, rather than asking them to be critics or them to be curators or them to be commentators on Henry's work, um, it's just gonna be some artists talking to each other, I, I hope. Um, with all of the smart things that they have to say about art making. Um, and maybe I'll just kick it off um, to get things going um, and just ask you, like, like, everybody has a visceral and immediate response to, if you're an artist, to, to art. And uh, what is the, the burning one thing that you think about when you think about Henry Taylor's work? You oh, you want to say? I got my friend over here, Julie Pinkham. And uh, her mom was my seventh grade teacher, and uh, I was born in Ventura, and, and her mom was a teacher in Oxnard, so we have to get that straight, but I understand that, uh, you know. But I've been here a long time, I get it. No, but I have been here a long time, and uh, McLean, this is, there's your sweater. I, I, it's been 10 years, I know you've been looking for her. It's a good cabinet. You know what I mean? All right, I just want you to know. I know you got, but anyway. So, that's all I gotta say for right now. So, that wasn't for me. I got you. Okay. Um, 
thank you for coming. I'm sure uh, you've all seen the show, and maybe like me, I mean, the first time I saw your work, Henry, it just put my brain on fire. It was uh, Love at First Sight, and uh, at the loft, I didn't go to your Chinatown studio, but uh, the loft on 3rd Street. And I just walked in, and it was like walking into uh, 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 like a cavern of wonders. Just everywhere you turned, there was um, there were paintings, big paintings, small paintings, collections of things like records and books, and the everything was uh, in flux. So you asked me what. Uh, my first impression of Henry's work was, it was like uh, immediate and uh, like love at first sight. Like, oh, this is fantastic. The first time I saw Henry's paintings, I probably saw them uh, as he was working on them in progress. Um, one thing that I think about when I think about artists like Henry and the way he works and the way he lives and the conversation that he has about, not even about art, but about life and just talking to him and just hanging out with him. It reminds me of um, <laughs> Anita Baker song, You Bring Me Joy. Um, I think the paintings have a certain level of joy that exists through a lot of compl complications that are happening in the painting. And it's also, uh, a big example of, of artist liberation in the way that I believe looking at the paintings, Henry takes lots of liberties in communicating certain ideas that are really tied into emotion. And that's the thing I like a lot. Because you know, for, for a painter and for people here or figurative painters, we're always asking, our, asking ourselves questions like, can you do this? Does this make sense? Are these things like, are the hands right, or are the legs right, or those things that are part of like constructing paintings, um, as well as the abstraction too, but thinking about, thinking about space. And I think Henry's work, for me, kind of defies a lot of the kind of typical ideas of what a painting could be, because he even undermines that idea within the way that he makes paintings. And I feel like when I look at the work, it's about emotion. It's about how he feels, how he's feeling now. And from knowing Henry over the years, when I look at his work, I can tell the things that he care about in the painting when I see a painting, like the way that he distributes detail in certain areas of the painting. And to me, I feel like it's beyond just a painting. It's more of a journal. And it has to do with how he was feeling that day. Yes, and how interesting that subject was to him that time. And maybe how non-interesting other elements in the painting may have not taken this attention for me as an artist looking at it because we construct things based on our, what we want people to know. And I, that's what I like about the work. You know what I'm saying? You know? That's why I called you. <laughs> it is true. Uh, uh, many times I'll ask Henry, like, what, you know, who's that? Or what's happening there? Uh, or what are you trying to say with that? You know? And uh, Henry will look at me like I'm missing the point, and he'll just say, I was just painting. I was just painting. I was just getting in there. I was just moving it around. I was just painting. What's it, what's it like, Henry? Like, you know, like wh when you say it's just, it was just painting, what do you mean by, by that? Don't over, <laughs> it's not a trick question. No, I mean, what's it like? Yeah. Is it like, what's... Well, no, but I'll tell you, you know, uh, I mean, I get it right. I mean, that feeling might change because the situation is often different. You know, I do portraits. I went to Madison sometimes, like she talked about speed. I don't know how long you're going to stay. And I might, oh, yeah. So I'm saying that, 
我不是关心，有些。When you're in it, when you're in it, when you're in the studio, in the space of making, how does what, it feel? Yeah, what is it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, 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 like I said, it does vary. Sometimes, you know, it's like, you know, it's like two seconds on the clock. You got to really work. You got to go fast. And then there's other times when you're just making work. So it depends on what I'm making. You know what I mean? You know, so so it varies. But I always want to enjoy it. You know, I mean, that's what's important. For me, like even though, you know, but sometimes you just gotta finish, like the show, you know what I mean? And you're just compelled, you know, or because, yeah, there's reasons, different reasons for different things, and maybe a certain painting might carry、uh, a different sort of, might be, maybe it's, they're all significant, but like when I did Mike Lucky or something, it was like important, so it was like, you know, you invested, you was like, oh. So yeah, they're always different. Do the sit are the decisions decisions, or are you just in there? Come on, no, <laughs> no, really. You know, that's why it's like B side, and that's why、yeah. the B side is also maybe could you know also、uh, you know I like to refer to sports.、Yeah. I'm just saying that、uh, when you you know Allen Iverson doesn't know what he's gonna do in the lane. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My other, you know, if you're improvising, so if you're Being intuitive, you don't really know, but you know it's like you know you're not going to travel, but、right. you know how to dribble,、right. so you know how to apply the paint. So you basically have a facility there, but yeah, you don't always know unless you know at a certain stage you're starting. But usually, I'm sort of like brainstorming, you know, and oftentimes the work looks nebulous and crazy, but again, going back to that quote. Got to be lost before you can be found. So you know what? That's a, that's the journey. Like you said, journey. You know what I mean? What is it without a journey? Why buy a car if you ain't gonna go nowhere? <laughs> also, a good you know what I mean? No, I'm just talking. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What do you all, as artists, see about that? Like when you look at his work, I know you see the journey. I know you see the the time of the making and the decisions, the decisions that are going into a given painting or a given sculpture.、Um, how how do how do how do you take that as painters? Thank you, Henry. <laughs> Say it again, Bennett. <laughs> I'm just asking you to respond to what Henry said. I guess. It's better than asking. It's like in school, asking the student, "What are you doing? Why are you talking?" Wait, let's. Yeah, why are you talking? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You gotta raise your hand. It's true. Okay, but let's let's just. I'll just take this opportunity. Can we take this opportunity to talk about? I was talking about at lunch. Okay, so、mm -hmm. here's because at lunch you said, "What do you love about Henry's paintings?"、Right. Okay, so. Here's the the thing that I love about your paintings.、Um, the entire surface, there is no figure ground problem there. That the figure and the ground, which you could be called like a building or a sky or a, a, a tree or a bush、um, or a floating head or a hyena, that everything is part of. The picture and nothing is when they're really, really like good. Everything's locked in in a kind of puzzle, and so space is bending. And I think that that has so much to do with the even the meaning is that the bending of the space and things happening at the same time that you've pieced together. Um, is what I think is so sophisticated about the painting, and one of the ways you do that is to、um, take the figures and like kind of、uh, bring in one arm, take the arm out and put it where it's a little bit lower than it's supposed to be. Say so, if my arm is around Derek, then where it comes out the other side, it's like a little bit lower. So it's not really connected to my shoulder. And then you're doing that throughout the whole painting. You know where we're going? What? We're going to your painting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Check this out. Yeah. Hey, do you guys know how it works? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much you probably. 
when you think of a Mary Weatherford, you probably think of a maybe a very, you know, like just a few colors, correct? And it's like um, primaries, whatever, whatever, you know, with the sculptural light, boom, boom. But Mary, when she was that sister, what did you think then? Tangled vines. Thank you. <laughs> See where she's talking about? You're talking about connecting. Yes, yes, and yes, bend. yes. And, and I was going to say bend. So really, you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. that dance, you know, you know yeah, the first time I bent glass, you know, I it was like my, my, my mind melted because I was holding a piece of glass and they said, here, you try it. So I was holding the piece of glass over the flame and something that I knew as like my mind knows this is solid. This is not liquid. It's a solid thing. It's holding liquid. So I was holding the glass, and it bent, and I I almost like like it was like tripping, but you weren't tripping. And the guys at the neon studio laughed at me. They said, "Ha ha, <laughs> it happened." <laughs> so the the pushing together of all the pieces. And so it's like it's a cubist project. It's e equals mc squared. It's the unified field theory. And when the paintings are like hot, 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 it's like unified. And everything is moving together past, future, present, people. Talking to the mic. No, I was just saying, I was saying, you know, um, well. We were talking about the sciences, and I didn't get A's in science. <laughs> but I think about science, and I think about those equations, yes. you know, when things come to you, like in the moment, you know. But like you said, like having to bend things and, and, yeah. and right? Yeah, well, that's like the, you know, what's the closest distance between Our two points? Or if the things can't fit on the page, right. you know, it's like, oh, shoot. Or you can just... You know what I mean? Yeah. Make the face fit on the page. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> but that's where they depart from the photograph. Yes. And we were talking about this at lunch, too. Like, I hired a woman to paint a watercolor of my brother's dog, and he treasures it much more than the photo of the... Anyway, we started talking about why yeah. the painted portrait is so... Uh, I mean, it's really looking at your work, you kind of get a sense of where you are in the work. Like, it's really present from where you're standing when, you, when you're looking at your painting. You can see from looking at the work that you immersed in certain characterizations of the subject in your paintings. And not only, only that, the titles that go along with the paintings add a certain level of depth that kind of alludes to black vernacular in a way that can't really be described in words. So when you look at your paintings, you get like an emotional response to it because you know that it was an emotion that happened that went through you as an artist. And looking at your paintings, it, it moves people. It moves people in a lot of ways. Like if you were not you and someone made that painting, it would just be a formal painting. But because of who you are, the ingredients that we can't really confine as, like, as a name is what the paintings have. Like, even when you put a title on a painting and it's describing the painting, it's more than description of the painting. So that's, you know, that's what I think about when I the painting. I was saying before at lunch, the painting that I really love is called I Can Do Bowleg, and I think it's a student museum collection. And when I saw it, I don't like reading the titles of your paintings before I look at your paintings. I like to wait until I look at the paintings to look at the formal structure. And when I saw the leg, and the way you painted it, which was very expressive. And again, it would be just a painting by an artist of, of expression normally. But if you are a black person and you hit read that, you know exactly what that means and you know exactly what you're talking about because that's something that people should pretend they used to want to be when you were younger. You would pretend you had bow legs because you thought that was more attractive when you went to school. You know, that was a very particular thing that having a black community and people would pretend to be bow-legged and pigeon-toed because it was a more appealing thing. And when I saw that, it made me laugh because it's, it's historic for me. And it's a part, you bring certain histories into the conversation of contemporary art that were not there by just naming them. 
And it's not even, you're not even thinking about history in that way, but you are able to do it through your painting. And that's the most important part, that it's done through the quality of your paint first. And then the title just informs something else that's totally, totally like in a dimension that's beyond the walls of the gallery or the space or the canvas. And I think it goes right into the sculptural objects that you make. And I think that the sculptural objects has really given us the three-dimensionality of how you're thinking. And it's really like an experiment. And you can just see it. And I'm not going to be surprised to see a lot of those sculptural objects in your paintings in the future, because I know they're going to be. Because I think that you're just working it out <laughs> in a museum space for some things you want to do later on. That's what I'm looking at when I'm looking at the paintings. I mean, the sculptures, yes. Derek is referring right that second to the, the installation with the mannequins in the Black Panther um, uh, outfits and everything that was in that room. Um, and um, do you want to say how that, that, that room came together? I mean, um, well, might as well. I mean, I think, <laughs> no, only because, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, um, only because that installation relates to, like I said earlier, the sculptural piece um, with the branches on the running figure. The bronze. The bronze. And it has to do with an older sibling, my brother Randy. So there's like a connection to all three. So I think it would probably give people a more, th maybe a thorough understanding. So anyway, long story short, my brother, my mom, my, my dad lived in Oakland, California. Uh, my brother um, was also a lover of, an or is a lover of animals and, you know, studied to be a vet. And, 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 and so, he was someone I, like my other brother who's there, I looked up, I'm the youngest of eight, so I looked up to, I mean a literal way, right? Up to everybody, up to everybody. So they excelled at things, you know, like track stars. <laughs> I didn't run, you know, academic. I wasn't an A student. What you gonna do? <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, so Randy, when I, we were going to Oakland, you know, sort of uh, introduced me or exposed me to like the Panther Party at a young age, and Huey Newton and 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 George Jackson and Angela Davis. So these were the people that he would talk about, and you know, and also the people in the Native American movement. You know, Russell Means, Dennis Banks, all those people. Russell Means, and uh, therefore, like, so the largest painting in the exhibition, I believe, vertically. When, uh, is uh, the portrait of my brother with the dog behind him. So no, that yeah, was a brother, room. you know, so, you know, and then usually I would, you know, I just, he inspires a lot of the things that I do, you know, as do everyone I probably meet, you know what I mean, in some sort of way. But, uh, so yeah, that, so that's how, so that's how that came about. It was just my way of paying homage to my brother and, you know, I mean, I, I wasn't thinking or trying to be grandiose. It was, in the beginning, just, say, an afro or jokingly or jacket or thinking about just some singular sort of piece, you know what I mean? Something very minimal or, you know, so, but then it just sort of grew, like a lot of things, like the grass <laughs> and the weeds and the birds. No, shut up, Shannon. But... You, uh, it also, I mean, that happened, a lot of that happened in the, in the installation, right. like in the time of, of, the time of making was also the time of installing, and um, uh, we knew in a way that the, the, the mannequin installation, the centerpiece of that room was, was coming, we planned for that and everything, and then I think once we began to install it, here it is now, um, you felt, Henry, like the room was too big, like the walls were too tall or there was too much white wall, and so you, you decided to do some other things. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, um, decorating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, 
Yeah. I used to make the signs. Yeah, you made the signs. I was a sign painter. Yeah. So I made some signs. Made some signs. You Never some... was a scene. No, I'm sorry. Go yeah. on, then. No, no. You sound serious. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to keep up with you, which I can't do. Uh, no, no, you're good. You're good. Uh, the room, the, I mean, the room is multidimensional, obviously, like visually. There's so many different things going on in that room. Um, there, there are different zones. We could have put like, a police car in there or something. We, we could have, but we you didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, it was big, but I didn't want to, yeah. like, oh, he's a, he, he demanding, he demanding. Next, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll do another show. Yeah, we'll do another show. That sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> He, Part two. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He, B side, A side, what's up? We, we can do a show together. You believe? <laughs> Shit, Derek, what's up? Let's do it. I think Let's we got it. We have at least a four artist oh, show here. Jane Fonda? <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Activist. Activist. You know what I mean? Remember those people? In the 60s, you know, there were people who were activists. People who weren't afraid to say something. That's what I'm saying. You know, a lot of people don't say that. Yeah. You know? That's true. That's like, true. Yeah, think about it. Yeah. Like, uh, like those little, you know, like Martin Brando, you know, coming out of Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and, you know, over there, you know, in the corner with Bobby Seale and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. You know, yeah. Donald Sutherland. Actually, Brando is in that installation, isn't he? I mean, I think so. Is J. Edgar Hoover, Hoover is in that installation? Mm -hmm. You know, I love to do that. Y'all stop, I'm just saying. I'm just being... I think it's just being... <laughs> don't say it, don't say it. Go ahead, man. That's not my fault, y'all. It's my fault. It's a... uh, I liked what you said, though, Derek, about the installation being a kind of like... Um, a kind of breeding ground for, for future artworks. I, I do think that there are, there are elements in there that will show up in paintings or that will show up as discrete sculptures at a different point. There are like a million ideas for artworks in that room. Um, at, at one moment, uh, there, there, in the room, there are two gloves, black fists, that are just hanging, suspended from the ceiling, kind of disembodied from the, the kind of mannequins of the athletes, referring to Mexico City, 68, um, the fists are just floating, disembodied. Um, that's like that's a great it's sculpture. A painting. Came it's up a painting. With. Yeah. I mean, even your sculptures are paintings. You know, the way you look at the way I'm looking at your work, I see the same type of motion and dimension in the paintings as I see in the sculpture installations. The only difference is the sculpture installations give you the 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 level of scale um, and engagement with the human figure, human body that a painting cannot do. The painting just, and I think that the painting of your brother, the Black Panther, and it being kind of continuation for making the physical objects kind of about the same subject was really just, I mean, for me looking at you just want to just amplify that more. Like the painting was, was good, but you want people to know that this is what the painting is about. It's not just a painting, you know? And I love the paintings just by itself. Yes, yes. I mean, to elaborate on that. Yes. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah, it brought it back to the painting. It made the painting have even more meaning than you had before looking at the painting. Because the paintings, are, are, even though they have a lot of story in it, they're not very linear, like most figurative paintings. Right. But when I walked into your family room, I knew it was your family room. Just by the way it was framed and the way the paintings, you can tell your viewpoint even in the family room in a very different way than you see the other paintings in other rooms. You can just tell by the way you, you painted them. You know, where your sons and daughters in one room and your mother is, that room should be a church. <laughs> it should be a regular room. It should be like a church. It has like a lot of stuff going on in it that feels very uh, deep and like complicated. You know, uh, you know, Derek, you just made me go back like 25 years. Because the first installation I made, I made was the church at Cal Arts. It was just all pews and a podium. And you mentioned the Matisse windows. Yeah. So yeah. I tried to emulate the Matisse windows and the cutouts. So yeah, that was like in the Broads at Cal Arts in the, in the, where the residences were. Yeah. 
Just, just a thought, you know what I mean? Yeah, a church. You got the feel. I felt that. I felt that. Yeah. Well, I like, I just want to, you know, remember how I said my favorite, for a long time, my favorite painting was a, was a poem. You know which one? It's a small black painting with white letters. And Did it Jesus says, walk walk? Jesus, about that at lunch. Jesus fixing to walk on water. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would think about that a lot. And it has to do with uh, what I was talking about with the space. Because I, I could be wrong, but I think that most paintings of Jesus in that miracle, he is walking on water. Wait, say that again? He's walking on water. He's in the middle of the miracle. So this, <gasps> this poem, though, is Jesus fixing to walk on water. So if you think about it, right? If you think about it, it's a man who is about to change, bend the arc of history. And he has a decision to make. I'm going to make this miracle, or I'm not going to make this miracle. If I make the miracle, I'm going down this path. If I don't make the miracle, I'm going down another path. So that little painting is very complex in its meaning, and that's why I love that painting. I don't have to give it to you. It's, I think it's in one of my rooms, right? On the, on it, he, it's on a piece of wood. I know yes, this one you're yes, talking about. Yes. And, you know, just prior to this, you know, because of this in anticipation of this um, panel, I was thinking about that, but I also, oh, I'm not, no. It was just Boys Lights, I think. Who's that? Is that the, the artist Boys Lights? Boys Lights. Lights. No, not Boys Lights. Um, oh, oh, shit. Anyway, it went from him. But no, it, was, it, it just, uh, the Florida artist um, just recently passed, man of cancer. Anyway, that was just one that was just looking at style. Sometimes you can just sort of dismiss, dismiss your work. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, when somebody recognizes it, you know, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, it's like sort of subtle. I don't know, man. It's just <clears throat> knowing how to embrace them. I don't know. It, okay, a little bit of a shift. It, it, there are, you, but you mentioned poetry and you mentioned words, um, and Mary was dwelling on words, and you mentioned the titles. Um, I love your language, Henry. Like you, you have a very unique way of using uh, words in your work and language in your work, and sort of alluding and um, associating with things. Um, I'm not going to ask you to comment on that, but but uh, what do you, I mean, you all say, say. Let's keep talking about words a little bit. Well, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't think any of. I don't know if Derek uses tags or, or whatever, but I think we're all of all aware of artists that use tags, and we all appreciate language. I mean, art is yeah. a form of language, and 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 um, I think um, yeah, like you go to the side of Gaffin, there's Barbara Kruger. Uh, we're LA people. We might think of Ruche. Mm -hmm. I know. I you know, you know mm -hmm. I think. I don't know, in so many different ways, but I don't know. I mean, maybe because of my brothers or my father, I mean, or what my mother says is to keep things alive or whatever, but also, I don't know, like what Derek would say, sometimes you, you it's like almost like a double whammy. It's like, yeah, you, know you get I mean? it. Yeah, it's like, it's like a one-two punch. Yeah. You make the work, and then you step back and look at it and say, this is what I'm thinking. I think it's probably like James Brown when he's going, <laughs> Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> no, it's like that, really. It is. That is an art yes. historical no. distinction. <laughs> and, and I would like to say, you know, the idea of text. Like, I, I have used text in my work from time to time, but I, in my show that's currently up at Flag Foundation, a lot of the paintings in the exhibition, the majority of the paintings have text. And I want to tell you, the, a lot of the influence of me using text in this work is from you, actually. Um, looking at your paintings in the past uh, few years, thinking about my work, thinking about the context of my work, and when I say the influence of you on this work is the way you use text in a way that's not literal. It's text, 
but not literal, which is very unique. Usually when artists add words to a painting is to give a description of the painting that will give the viewer access into the painting. Your paintings, your text is very coded and it actually leaves out a lot of context for people to know where they are in the painting or how the painting is communicating with them. And I think that is a form of liberation in your work that drew me to really think about the paintings that I made in the past two years that's showing. Because a lot of things you think about may or may not end up in the painting, but I think that when you put the, paint, the text on the painting, I feel like it is what you're thinking right now when you're making a painting. It's really like a notation. It's not really for the viewer any, at all. You just want to see it on there. It, you know, and it might remind you of something, and you just want to make sure that you, you just mark this time. And I think that's why I see when I look at the painting. LeBron James, huh? Yes, exactly. LeBron James <laughs> Yes, so he so yeah, exactly. He wanted, to see it. he wanted to see it. And I think that when I look at the painting, when I see cornbread or when I see peanut, I know it has a backstory that I don't have privilege to, and I'm okay with that. But I like the idea that I see the artifact from that story that you allow me to see like some element of it that I can guess what it meant. Like I like the idea looking at your work, I can guess what it means. And also I can use my cultural insight to assume what I think you mean. And to me, that makes me more interested in the painting. You know what, I, I'm not trying to be a cartoon. <laughs> I hope you're not trying to, I know you're not insinuating that. But you know what you, you know, I was like, wanting to like withhold the title I wanna yeah. mention. Yeah. But yeah. You, you, you hit the nail yeah. on the head, you know yeah. what I mean? We might we can find you, you know yeah. what I mean? And some uh, some yeah, 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 like, yeah. like, hey, I bought this whole book of a, uh, I mean a uh, 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 box of bazooka bubblegum and the, the, I was gonna put like a little like Lichtenstein sort of thing on it. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. It's like me saying, hey, come over, yeah. let's play. A side, B side, this is a play. We need to jam together. Yes. But I think um, when I think about it gets more to the truth. If you allow, if, if you, you look for it or you, if you, you know, if it's your own words or made up, sometimes yeah. your own. Yeah. But, you know, you don't, you might misplace your journal, yeah. you know. So when I think about you also tell on yourself, and I think that's what writing. Yeah, I know. And a I, lot know. Of, I know. You know what I'm saying? I know. Like I when know. I say, I "Hey, <laughs> go ask Miss Robinson for twenty dollars till next week." It's the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know. So it's like to remind everybody where we came from. So if we think about that small little Jay Z painting that I made, you know, I mean, that's, to me, you know, it was like small, and you know, it's like yeah, but it was. It's 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 funny. It doesn't always come, you know, but. Sometimes I think what you say is true. You know what I mean? Um, I think what we were saying earlier, I say to myself is sometimes, you know, like no, like Dylan said, no time to think, or the moments you want to be introspective, or, or just a, like, you know, what did I just do? Or, or sometimes our, I don't know, sometimes we're more, I don't know, maybe our process or how we make work. You know, like I said, I think the album, the song is like, hey, I can be all over the place as long as. You know, hey, if you're a musician and you're writing a song, you're writing a song. Yeah, 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 exactly. How you gonna throw yeah, that song away exactly. and it yeah. wasn't the right thing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I totally understand what you're saying. I, I get it. No, I get it. Uh, a lot, a lot of, the, a lot of, the, a lot of folks love your paintings because they, it, because, because they recognize the figures in them, or because they because the, the paintings kind of are narrative in some kind of visual way. They tell stories and about this person or something that's happening in a scene. Um, a recognition is an important, visibility and recognition are important aspects of your work. I also really love the places in your work that are abstract and um, that are not figurative or that are kind of, um, you know, where that one-to-one -one relationship isn't happening. Tell, say something about the abstraction in your work. I don't have, uh, golly. My tongue wouldn't move. <laughs> I understand. 
Hey, you know, I don't know if I need to ask that, Mary, but but I'll just say our our thing. But like I said, well, we were talking at dinner, and I mentioned Noah Davis, and I remember a show that was curated at MoCA, and and I would you know say like if I go over Mary's, I don't know what book you have open at your table. You know what I mean? But you know, there's always usually some art books. But I think I think that. You know, I think if you study your art, you know what I'm saying? I think, like, even if we talk about Buford Delaney or somebody, right? I mean, he, you know, does a lot of portraits, but you pull Duke Buford Delaney out, you know who he is? He's black like me. You know who you're talking about, Buford Delaney, you know? And, and I, I think that there's artists like that, or you just want to just, uh, it's like fusion. You know what I'm saying? I think. You know, so you feel like... It is like music. No, I'm, not, I'm just saying, because you know what? I'm gonna be, you know what? It goes back to Blues for Smoke, the show that you created, you know, and which was amazing. I'm going to give you some props on that, that you hope, you know, Popel Peace and all that shit. Hey, hey but you know what? Um, when I was reading the Ford, I thought I was reading about painting. Mm -hmm. So, so interchangeable. So what I'm really saying is um, that... The background, I think, why did George Bond produce the Beatles? He was a classical musician. So I think that's, that's what we do. You know, I think Nina Simone studied classical. Uh, Miles went to Julia. We just, we got to blend it. We always had to back, blend it. Back and forth. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, we, just, yeah. we just can't beat the drum all the time. You got to throw something else in yeah. there. No, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Y'all didn't like that, huh? Hey, y'all got, you better hold the drum. Shit, they're going to steal it. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Shit, ain't nothing wrong with a drum. Shit. They used to, I love the drum. The Indians, I used to go, I go to powwows. There's a ribbon shirt. My brother's wearing a ribbon shirt. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, you couldn't dance. Hey, how about that? What's that song uh, 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 by uh, Link Ray? You know what I mean? He didn't have no words. They all loud it. Sometimes, you know, I don't know. You know, uh, what are you going to Revolution. What's up? I have, I have a question. What's that? I have a good question. Okay. Thank you. So, Bennett, you just talked about the abstract parts in Henry's work, but I think that's a painting underneath. You know what I mean? I mean, you know what? I think that's when we, we talk about process. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about, like, uh, a Chris Wood or something, I mean, you ain't got to be a fan of his, or a Cy Twombly or some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hey, it's all right. I scribble for you. All right. No, I'm just joking. What's up, Grant? You know what I mean? But no, I think that's important. You know, it's like somebody doing your walls and shit. You know, you need that far from what kind of finish you want. But what were we saying? Well, go ahead, Ray. I'm sorry. Well, I think well, the part Bennett's referring to that he thinks is abstraction is that you're, you changed your mind. Do you think that they're abstract? Oh, oh. abstract parts. Like, okay. The woman, uh, the one painting the one, I was talking that I love, uh, in, in the, the nude woman on the couch with the yeah. black cat, yes. and yeah. the mountains in the background, and then right here, it drops off into another space. How about this? How about this? Say in the jet. Uh, hold your thought. You know, I'm from California, so you know Richard Diebenkorn? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I went to the Orange County with Liz, I was looking at Richard Diebenkorn, but the Richard Diebenkorn, if you look at it, you think it's abstract, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's it's a, yeah. But you know, but, you know, and that's when I go back to the Blum and Poe show, it was an aerial view of that. I'm just saying because, but also, I know, you know, the um, Gervais people probably aren't here, but Gervais, you know, but whatever, whatever. Uh, but that's what I, you know what I mean? You know, the, the color field because of space, yes, yes, yes. you know? Yeah. And I think. That makes sense, you know, it's like, yeah. I didn't mean to cut yeah. you up, but I'm just saying that, go ahead, Mary, the, the whole, it's. I was just trying to get you to talk about the, painting the, the right to change your mind to make, oh, I was making a painting of this, yeah. and then you are the That's only, you're I, the only one that knows that, yeah. what yeah. painting was underneath. Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you know how you look at a Da Vinci book, yeah. and you like, you're looking in the margins instead of at the actual work, or you go to a club, and you know what I mean? But you really are looking at what's on the parameter or whatever. 
you know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I, I think that uh, I think that's I think that's what it is to um, what's that? <laughs> yeah. About changing your mind. Yeah, about oh, changing yeah, your mind. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, but you know, or you wouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like courage, because I remember, you know, Julie had him. Jarvis said, you can't fall in love with anything. Um, you know what I mean? You know, uh, I've been working on that for that flower for months. You know what I mean? You got to get rid of it. Right. Uh, get rid of it. <laughs> it don't work. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think if I don't see that in my own work or in somebody else's work, you know what I mean? It's like, okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes we got to go for the field goal. We got who going to kick it. It's something like that. The Hail Mary is that. It's all of that. I think it's... I think, you know, so having that courage, and that's why. There was something. But that's that, why it's like, hey, like her. It's like, you know what, you've been doing some upset work. The whole irony is, like, this girl can dry her ass off. But she, you don't see nothing in it. You don't see a stroke. The stroke is in the light. It's not in the, the light. light. The, the light. light. You, you going back to church. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, but the painting, I'm trying to get to this thing about the painting that's painted over and the change of the mind. But we know because of your process that like you loved memory, yes. the painting that was there that's yeah. gone, right? And you yeah. know, you like, always know. you yeah. always yeah. know. You lost it. Yes. yes. But also, yes. you know, the history yeah. of you being a sign painter and. It's not a history, but I had yeah. $20. I mean, you did it. I'm saying, but. <laughs> no, I'm saying, but that's part, of the, that's part of the muscle memory of painting. Like, when you're painting for other people, like people who are artists, assistants, or whatever and you're painting, if you're really paying attention to what you're doing, you actually are gaining muscle memory on paint. You're learning like what textures work well with each other, what colors work well with each other, what does not work, how to mess things up. I mean, you're doing things that's not like, you know, the outcome is something that is, 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 is gained through the memory of doing something. When you, it's your confidence, too. Yes, right? I'm saying. So you've done it so much that... Mama can cook, right? And I love it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. She improvises. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. That's all I'm saying. That's what I love the about the painting. It's good. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Something yeah. like that. Cornbread and water. Huh. Why? Yeah. I don't know. But you're, uh, I mean, I, I agree with what, both of what you're saying. I mean, there are paintings underneath there... Um, that maybe were painted over, or maybe the canvas was used for something else, and then it's used for this. Um, but in the end, um, you don't necessarily, once you think about the fact that it used to be another painting, like, then you just stop, because it's still the visual you've got in front of you, and you still have to sort of, like, take in that patch of green next to that patch of yellow, you know? It's, That's it's, probably why vintage is so high. Vintage. But but it is a mark of the painting process, like you say, the process that includes like starting over. But listen, is the whole oof right? You walk in and it's like if you're hitting them every time, boom, 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 and I've never seen you paint over something, change something. You're a different kind of artist. Like so, for me, what I'm seeing, I'm seeing like some of them. You just go point to the down out gone and then this one well okay it's changing it's changing it's changing so there's if it was one way all the time or the other way all the time I would be far less interested so when they work all the way and there's nothing underneath I go I, ha I have an emotional reaction to that like it makes those more special. There's some that well, are fast. There's some that are fast that are some that are slow. And if they're all fast, it's boring. I mean, if they're all slow, it's boring. We like an interesting mm -hmm. game. If you go yeah. see a fight, yeah. you yeah. want to see somebody throw some blows. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And if everybody just dancing around and getting hit, you know, I'm not that I'm in the violence, but you want to see somebody throw some blows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all I got to say. Oh, that was a boring game. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Even if you well, it's like the, the, the drawing and the installation is such a risk. I mean, like you get the charcoal out and you start making the drawing that I guess you could call them in to paint the wall over if you... Yeah, not no time for that. Yeah. You knew exactly what you were doing, though, with that charcoal. I mean, it was, it was beautiful from the moment you first marked on the wall. The first trees you drew on there, it was, it was like, no, I'm just saying. 
And you guys, thank you for coming, man. I know yeah, we're let's awesome. listen. Um, we we will we will take. So we will take a we will take a few questions from the audience. Uh, Henry will take a few questions from the audience, and um, or Mary or Derek or or I or yeah. Henry, who are your heroes? Yeah. Uh, he asked, who are your heroes? I thought you said you owe me some money. Who are my heroes? <laughs> uh, Julie's mom, my hero. I got a lot of heroes. You know, um, you know, you know, my family, you know, my brothers, you know, that's where it starts, I think. You know, I think the whole show is about foundation. You know what I mean? In some ways, everything, something like that. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, obviously, you know, you know, it's funny, like, you know, Mary asked me to make, uh, call me up, and, you know, it made me think about some things, you know, so, and it made me realize that there's a lot of people, like, one day you say you like this, next day you say you like that. So I just refrain from saying anything, but there's a, you know, but when you were talking about, you know, maybe horse flipping came to mind or today or, you know, but you know, you, you just, I think we try to embrace, I try to embrace it all. You know what I mean? I mean, I was just trying to say, yeah, but you ended up doing you, but, you know, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't do any good to name drop, you know. If I knew a show, you know, to go see, I'd make a recommendation or something like that. So. <coughs> No, no, I don't know. You know all that. I mean, I'm like, you know what I mean? This... Oh, you want to hear some people? Okay. You know, <laughs> you know uh, what? I don't even know where to start. Who do you like? Yeah, so I, you many, know, so like many. Bob Thompson. I like Justin. Yeah, Bob Thompson. Yes, yes. You know, I've been to name some black folks. Let's see. Horse Dippin. You know, I know, really, seriously. You know, you know, uh, uh, Clementine Hunt. I don't even know like someone. Hey, boy. Hey, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, the one AC got all this stuff. No, um, um, uh, trailer, trailer, Hammond. Bill Trailer. Hammonds. Oh, Hammonds. no, no, old, old guy, you know, in the 20s, 30s. But you know what? Bill Trailer. Bill Trailer. Bill Trailer. No. Yeah, Bill Trailer. Yeah. Ooh, there's a lot. I love art. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All of it. Yeah. So I try to love, I just, you know, I try to love, I mean, you know what I mean. I, you know, you think you don't like something, but next week you, oh, them shoes are ugly. I always say that. Mm -hmm. The next week you got them ugly shoes. <laughs> love it, love it, for real. <laughs> Thanks for your question. They look kind of funny, but I guess not. Behind the, oh, excuse me. Um, I guess I'm asking about the 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 butter. The butter sticks in the show. That was seats. What's the significance behind the butter sticks? The trees benches. Must have had a good job. She didn't grow up in that time. No, it was welfare. It was just, you know, maybe <laughs> I can talk about the influence of Warhol, thinking about pop art and things like that. But it's just a stick. And maybe, you know, I might have considered putting tax on that. But maybe that would have been a little going a bit too far. You know, he sold it. You know what I mean? But just suggesting the cheese. A block of cheese. Yeah. Give me back that cheese. That's nacho cheese. You ever heard that one? Yes, sir. Nacho cheese. So, nacho cheese. I guess. To... <laughs> Give me back that cheese. So, do you like do you like butter in your rice? What's that? So, do you like butter in your rice? I like butter. Oh, I like these, baby. I don't. I, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Hey, you can do that when you're young. I don't do that. <laughs> A lot of things that a lot of y'all don't need, you know, a lot of people don't eat, you know, every once in a while, you know, I gotta break down. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Henry. Yeah. Um, I know how much uh, Noah Davis meant to you, 
And uh, if he was here, what would you say to him right now? What did Noah Davis mean to you? Yeah, and if he was here, what would you say to him right now if he was here? I can't tell you that, bro. That's personal as hell. That's my homie, dog. My little brother, I tell him I love him. I mean, I start telling him, you know, I love him. You know what I mean? I got a lot of people up in there. Right. Love, love, love. Like the, you know, no, seriously, though. You know what I mean? You know what he did. You recognize. That's all you got to do is yeah. recognize shit. But we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Well, um, if there are if there aren't any more questions, we will wrap this part of the event up and um, and take take a break. Go to the bathroom, go around, do whatever you like. And if you, if you wish to stay, we will uh, be selling books and Henry will be signing books for a little bit. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you.